go through and see uh, the prerequisites. Most of you have fulfilled the prerequisites, but if not, I would like to take you through uh, these areas. OK, so since this is a security course, every one of us should need to understand what is security. So probably you must be laughing. You would see, you would think, especially our senior guys, what to learn about security. Everybody knows about security. Yeah, of course. Uh, so then if I ask the question, what is security? What would be your answer, right? So then previously, Microsoft was not very really worried about these information and concepts because they think if the attendees of this course knows about Microsoft uh, uh, security, it will be fine, but which is not because we are using Microsoft and non-Microsoft products daily basis. And also concepts are really important to understand whether you are working with Microsoft or not. OK, so then we need to understand what is security. So security is easily explained using these three. CIA, right? Confidentiality, integrity and availability, right? So then any security implementation, including firewalls, intrusion detection systems, intrusion prevention systems, access controls, role based access, everything pretty much. What we are trying, what we're trying to achieve is hardening these three. Confidentiality, integrity and availability. So what is confidentiality? So everybody knows what is conf confidentiality, right? Confidentiality is making sure the resources or information only be available for the authorized people. OK, confidentiality meaning resources we will access resources in Azure. We would access a lot of resources, including virtual machines, virtual networks, uh, various other stuff. Any resource, if you want to access confidentiality, meaning only authorized people, authorized users will be able to access those. Then the question is, who's authorized user, right? So the authorization it can be performed in multiple ways, but basic, most effective way is username and password, right? So then by providing username password, we can implement authentication. Username and password provide authentication. So then actually username provides identification. Because I can say I'm Kushant, Dylan can say I'm Dylan, uh, Dilmi can say I'm Dilan, Dilmi, Samadara can say I'm Dil, Samadara. So that is our identification. Guys, uh, I will. I, I don't want to take this to any, any further, but if I give you an uh, example, these concepts are not very newly introduced or, you know, uh, the cybersecurity related concepts. These were there all the time, even historical, these were the available. And even today's world, when you are traveling from one country to another, if you are going through some security, secure areas, always you need to identify yourself using identity documents like passports, driver's license, your national identity cards. So those are the log documents or ways and which you will identify yourself. And also identification always comes with verification because otherwise I can say I'm Niranjan, Oh, uh, Dylan can say I'm uh, Sakindu, Madhushanka can say I'm Piyumal. We can uh, impersonate. I can say I'm Don, whatever. All right. So then if you provide identification, it has to be verified. So then when it comes to your passports, always whenever you say, uh, let's say I'm, I'm saying I'm, I'm Kushanta, and then the authorized people will verify with your photograph on the passport with your face. So that's the reason. Uh, they ask you to use recently taken photograph because otherwise they will not be able to validate you. But when it comes to remote services, things are different because there is no luxury of, you know, very verifying or validating using their faces. But in that we do usually right now with biometrics, but uh, with passwords, what we do is we provide a password to validate it. So that technically only the original authentic user should be able to uh, only authentic user should have the password or must have the password. So then if I you do my password that actually provide the verification. Right, so identification and verification uh, together uh, provide authentication, authentication. Right, authentication is that. OK, identification and verification together forms the authentication. 
And then what is authorization? The authorization meaning providing the level of access. Now, if you think about yourself, your company, uh, so everybody will have username and password. But does it mean everyone will have same access or access to everything? No, there are different layers and levels. That is what known as authorization. So you are authorized to access certain services. You're authorized to access certain resources. That is defined based on least permission policy. Least permission policy. What is that? Right? LPP, least permission policy. And the meaning is when it, when it comes to access controls, we will not provide the maximum access to anyone. But instead, we will provide them least permission policy based access. In other words, you will be only given permission only to provide or minimum set of permissions only to perform your job role. That is what known as least permission policy, right? Again, least permission policy is uh, providing minimum set of permissions to only perform your job role only, not more than that. Because if you have given more than that, they can exploit the permissions, right? That is author authentication. Authorization is level of access. Usually authorization database is managed by IT guys. IT team will configure them to appropriate a permission level. So it can be different uh, roles. In Azure, we have global administrator, we have uh, password administrator, user administrator. I will take you through there, right? So that is what. And then integrity is, trustworthiness of uh, trustworthiness so the integrity meaning let's say if you are sending an email from one uh, you know one user to another user uh, you should make sure your it systems are uh, validating or maintaining security which prevents a third person to access or tamper your communication the availability meaning uh, the resources making sure the resources are available as and, in, as and when required by authorized people. It's not that, let's say, if you want to access uh, uh, the portal that is only shared by FBI agents and you, you don't get to access, that doesn't mean availability is not there. Availability is uh, making sure authorized people will have access to the resources as and when required. So I hope you understand. And then least privilege access or least permission policies, I hope you understand. And then defense in depth also known as layered security, right? Defense in depth, also known as layered security, meaning you need to make sure in multiple layers, security is implemented. So it can be access control, it can be the location-based access, it can be network level access, it can be uh, application level access, right? So it can be implemented by using different appliances and applications, including firewalls, intrusion detection systems, prevention systems, and so on and so forth. And then when it comes to Azure, it's a bit tricky to provide, uh, you know, maintain the identity-based access controls, meaning so you can create users in Azure, you can create a role, groups in Azure, and you can provide certain permissions based on these groups. But if you look at Azure, as I said, it has large or low range of resources. As I said before, it has 600 over, over 600 services. So when it comes to that, Azure has very effective way of managing role-based access control. For an example, if you take any resource, as an example, let's say virtual machine. So if you want to provide someone access to virtual machine based on least permission policy, you can provide more specific address access. Let's say you want a, a person only to take backups from the virtual machine you can configure that level. So likewise, you can configure the level of access that is known as role-based access control to provide access can access based on the roles. And everybody knows multi-factor authentication, meaning other than username and password combination, we use different other uh, uh, layers when it comes to authentication. That is known as uh, MFA, multi-factor authentication. So that is uh, selected from three. One is uh, something you know, something like a pin, pin, pin number or password, something you know. Uh, the second option is something you have. So it can be smart card, uh, it can be ATM card, 
it can be your mobile phone, wearables, and anything. So you're combining uh, another component with your username and password combination. The third one is something you are. That is known as biometric authentication. So then if you combine any of the, these two, uh, then uh, it will become multi-factor authentication. Okay. And the next important thing is when it comes to Azure, especially for the security, we have shared responsibility. Shared responsibility. I think I have uh, uh, one example I would like to share with you. So I always would like to just uh, share this uh, before we start uh you know uh in-depth discussion over azure uh so guys i hope everybody is familiar with this image uh if you look at the leftmost uh you know corner uh, on premises data centers if you look at the layers all the layers managed by us and since siskia has your own data centers so if it is your own data center you are come mainly managing everything so including physical security of the server uh, data center and then the networking storage servers virtualization operating system middleware everything is managed by us but when it comes to cloud right azure is a cloud solution uh, so the cloud there are different offerings including infrastructure as a service platform as a service and software as a service okay so the infrastructure as a service is pretty much we are building our infrastructure on azure pretty much building our infrastructure on Azure. So then, and when it comes to that, that is the most flexible offering of Azure because Microsoft wouldn't give us physical access to their data centers, physical access to their storage, physical access to the servers and virtualization. That is managed by Microsoft. But on top of virtualization, we can create virtual machines, decide on our operating system, installing middleware, runtime data and applications so then when it comes to infrastructure as a service you would see the responsibility in terms of security is shared between cloud service provider which is microsoft and a uh, cloud consumer uh, which is us or our customers and then platform as a service is uh, some of the services in azure for example database as a service right so if you want to create a database you don't have to build a virtual machine so which is the case in on-premises. So if it is on-premises, you need to build the server first, and then you need to uh, install the operating system, and then you need to install the application like SQL Server, and then only you can create a database. But when it comes to Azure, you can just straight away go and create a database. So that is known as platform as a service because Microsoft is managing up to runtime. All the underneath layers, which is shown in orange color, managed by Microsoft. And that an application that is, uh, consumer responsibility and then software as a service SaaS. your rightmost corner you would see uh, software as a service even up to applications managed by microsoft right you don't have to worry about those but only thing is example is microsoft 365 office 365 so then you need to create users maintain identities maintain groups assigning licenses and managing our own data management not the responsibility in terms of security unless the user uh, unless we are engaging with user endpoint management, but when it comes to Microsoft servers, storages, uh, then we are not responsible for that. Okay, so I hope you understand. So I took you through very quickly important areas as you know uh, defined as a uh, prerequisites. And the last but not least, uh, there is another one called zero trust model. I think everyone of here has this uh, you know idea what is zero trust. Because when it comes to on-premises infrastructures, guys, so let's say this is on-premises infrastructure, and on-premises infrastructures, we have uh, something called perimeter. Perimeter is an area where you separate internal and external entities, external infrastructure and internal uh, world. So typically this here, we have firewall installed, and this area is known as demilitarized zone typically. Okay, and then, so when it comes to on-premises infrastructures, this is known as a uh, perimeter, and then the security method is known as castle security. Castle security. The reason is our security guys mainly 80% to 90% of uh, the concentration investment is concentrated on uh, this area perimeter. 
something like you know castles so if you have seen movies if you watch movies any kind of movies you have seen all the castles they are trying they are best to protect the perimeter which is the wall around the castle because they know if they can protect the castle wall they are protected and they are safe but the moment somebody breaks into uh, the castle wall then they are done so then security is completely compromised so same thing happened here because of that uh, these systems are known as castle security so it's a castle security um, uh, typically the insiders or internal people here are treated as a, a trustworthy people but many cases we know many instances even insiders or internal people can become uh, attacks attackers so those are known as insiders so because of that in azure and many cloud solutions we are using a special security implementation known as zero trust right zero trust so what is zero trust then so zero trust is pretty much not assuming anything before and verifying and validating every request before provide the access to any resources that is known as zero trust so validating every request before provide the access is known as a zero trust so there are multiple you know different ways that we can implement zero trust but as of now i hope you understand zero trust is not assuming in insiders are trustworthy or not assuming the person who's coming from this uh, operating system or this device is trustworthy 